Welcome back to Land the House. I'm Seth Johnson. Behind me is a giant stack of solar panels that I got from Langston Alternative Power. You may have seen the multiple hydro units that I've shown on the channel. Uh, well, Langston's Alternative Power also does solar power, and he was able to sell these to me for uh, 26 cents a watt, which is pretty outrageous. Um, I actually have uh, 30 panels in this stack. I'm going to be saving 10 of them, which is 2,500 watts. And the rest of these are going to go over to the Greenacre Homestead. I've actually got uh, Sam here today. We're going to be doing a uh, multimeter test to see if all the panels are making the voltage they're supposed to be making. So, just going to Judy chop these straps off? Yeah, I mean, they're really well on there. Nothing but the best. <laughs> the guy, he had one job. He's like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> It was Friday at the shipping center. <laughs> Looks like the next ones are on there a lot better. Yeah. Must have did that part on Wednesday. Stand back and top this top one. All right. Second one. As long as the whole thing doesn't shift. <laughs> that would have been sad. Now they're locked in pretty good. <whistles> Maybe I'll just drop these over here. I'm, just, I'm snow blind. I'm going to break this one and it could be yours. Okay. First panel looks good just from line of sight here. We're going to test the voltage with a multimeter. So this he's is got dollar. Uh, don't don't mess up my harbor freight. <laughs> yeah, harbor freight. Uh, so 34.8. And so if we were to angle this a bit more, see if your voltage goes up. 35.4, 35 35.5. 35 nice. Alright, so there this panel at least is hitting exactly to spec. And so if you were to Stick your tongue between those two leads, you should get eight amps. <laughs> Sam has got 20 of these panels and he has a Honda Element. We are gonna try to fit 20 of them in here. And uh, if not, he'll have to come back for another trip later on. There is no try, there is only do. And it's so. an Element, so <laughs> I'll break the axles trying. All wheel drive? When it wants to, it's smart. <laughs> oh. All -wheel drive. We managed to get all 19, oh, all 20. Yeah. <laughs> we managed to get all 20 panels packed into his element, but just barely. You can see that uh, it is a really close fit. This is one of those year in the making kind of videos. So I finally have gotten to the point where I am painting the black solar panels gray. And the reason I'm doing that is so that they will match the solar panels that I have currently up here. Not 100% match, but better than having four that are silver colored and then everything else being black. So anyway, I've got to go back and touch up these, but they should be good to go. So the task for today is to install four of these panels and they will be put on this side over here. So because I already have the angle that I need for the sun on these four panels, I'm going to extend out here from this right here out over here and have four more panels up this side right here and then the last four are going to be on the bottom all the way across so anyway what we need to do is take a board from uh, this post here uh, somewhere in here i'm not exactly sure i may just uh put a bunch of bolts right in here on both of these and then just continue out anyway we'll see but need to figure out what's straight here and come out over here and dig down right around here and right up here. So that's the task for right now. I've got a couple of 10 foot boards stretched out here. I bought these right before the prices went sky high so I'm happy to have them. Also I was browsing Instagram as one does and uh, a promotion for these Dura Knit firm grip gloves came on there 
and uh, I just filled out a form and they sent me some. So I think they're on uh, Home Depot is where you can buy these. Anyway, uh, so what I want to do is match up where this board meets the other right here. Hello. I'm trying to get by with only digging four more posts, mostly because of the cost of a four by four, but also because it's annoying to dig more holes. I've got my hole dug here and got some gravel in the bottom. I'm going to set a 4x4 in here, tamp it down a little bit. Okay, and I think what I'm going to do ahead, I'm going to go ahead and do. But that is raining. Yeah, it is starting to rain. I'm not oh, sure where it's coming from. Rain. You love rain. It's not good for cameras though. The strangest little rainstorm just passed by. So I sank the post in the ground there, leveled things off, put a single screw in to kind of hold it up. But then I started measuring and because I'm laying my panels in this direction, the first one comes out to here. And so the next one would be, the next attachment points past the end there. So I've cut a couple of boards here to extend this little gap up under here. So. The new board will come out to about right here and hopefully that will be enough support so it won't sag down but anyway we'll give it a try yeah. you found the glove everywhere else in north carolina you find newts and salamanders and blue-tailed skinks and other typical wetlands kind of wildlife but on my back hill here where nothing has grown only thing you find out here is desert based animals <laughs> check out this lizard here That's like a, a New Mexico horny toad. Each time that I brought out the camera to film, it started to rain. And so I went ahead and worked on the solar up here without you. So as you can see, I've got this one panel on right here. I've dug down and I've mounted everything that you uh, see up there. So I just kind of want to show you what I did to make the brackets. You can actually purchase brackets that will fit around a two by six, just like I've got here, but they're quite expensive. So what I've done is bought a $5 piece of all thread, and then I've got some of this aluminum bar. And so I'll be using the angle grinder to cut eight inch sections out of the all thread. And then on the metal bar, uh, I need uh, for every one of those unistrut, I need four pieces. So basically I've got a three inch section here and I will be drilling holes. This one was already here. I'll be drilling holes on both sides and that will allow the all thread to go up into the unistrut and just make my own bracket for uh, pennies instead of five, six dollars a piece. In order to get the nut onto the all thread after I've used the angle grinder, I use some sandpaper to knock down the burrs. Hmm, I wonder if I should bother with using a clamp or just use gloves. The last thing to do with these little brackets is to put two holes, one on each side, and it needs to be big enough to fit the all thread. So I'm just gonna use a smaller bit first to start a little pilot hole. And then just going to step up to a bit big enough to fit that all thread. Very good. Okay, now that I have the little bracket that we made, which is simply a piece of aluminum, and then these uh, eight and a half inch all thread. Uh, so what I'd want to do is set my unistrut or all strut up here. And I'm going to use the third hole down to put uh, a washer on the all thread and then drop that down the third hole and then the same thing for another one one washer and then on the fourth hole and that extends down far enough that I can get that little bracket piece in there And now I can tighten that down some 
don't have to go all the way yet because I'll have to move it around, but I can at least get it somewhat tightened. I'll probably have to get some pliers to hold on to that so I can tighten it the rest of the way. I have these on here kind of loose so I can move them around to fit the whole of the solar panel. Uh, the solar panel is heavy enough that I don't want to have to hold on to it and put the screws in. So I've just got some clamps I'm going to uh, put in here so that will hold the panel whenever I set it on here. All right, let's get that first panel and set it up here. I'm gonna reposition the clamps closer to where they need to be. I've got some inch and a half bolts that I'm gonna reach up under here and thread through the hole of the solar panel. And then I put that on the very top hole of the unistrut. Get a nut started on that. I know you can't see much with my hands in the way, but I can just take my word for it. So I lock those down right there. Let me get the other one on the other side. Well, it's taken me longer than I was anticipating to get these four new panels on, but they are here now. So I actually already had one, so it just took three here. But uh, the extra pieces of the Unistrut will be for the remainder of the four panels I have down over there. And so we'll have three kilowatts total. And uh, hopefully one full panel fits right in here. May have to do some uh, interesting configuring if it doesn't. Uh, but now I've got these three into one connectors. So I'm gonna be using two of them now until I get the other panels on. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have that set of four on the end as a series, this set of four right here as series, and then they will connect parallel to the uh, to each other. And so then these four down here on the bottom will also be in series and then connected parallel with the other two. Uh, so for now, I want to go up under here and connect uh, positive to negative, positive to negative, and I'll have a negative and a positive coming out on that end over there. And that's what will connect into here. And then the other set will connect into here. And then this will go down to the house. And I've got the other side right here. This positive here, I'm going to dedicate as the one that goes further down the line. So with this negative, I'm gonna find the positive of the other side right here and just connect those two together. Just like that. And then hopefully you can see this one right here is the uh, negative of that same panel and it will hook up to the positive of the one down below. one right here hook up to this one and so this one right here needs to go to this one over here there we go so now all four of these panels basically have one positive, one negative, and that needs to run down to the other end. So let me get some cables to extend this. Well, I was getting the last wire put together and uh, the rain hit, so I may run up there without you real quick and get that installed. Okay, and that's what those connectors look like right there. I've got those two. I stuck one wire in there just to keep debris out, but uh, that right there is what the other one looks like. And so we've got four together and four together and then in parallel. So now I have to go back under the house and uh, turn the system back on and hopefully we will see some power. Uh, about this cloud coverage right here, it was doing uh, 72 watts. Uh, so hopefully we'll see double that. Um, and then maybe yeah, I'll bring you back in a day or two whenever the sun is full 
and we'll get a, uh, a nice good reading. Yeah. Okay, let's see what's coming in here. 270, so yeah, it's already doing better than it was. Same cloud coverage. That's awesome. So uh, hopefully it'll be pulling somewhere around 1600 or so whenever we have uh, the full sun. I just turned on one nozzle of the hydro. It's doing somewhere in the 80s. And then five o'clock in the afternoon, we're doing about uh, 220 or so here on the solar. A few days have passed and I have been testing out the addition of the one kilowatt on my solar system. And I've seen it up to 1500 watts so far, which is pretty impressive. It was getting a, a max of about 800 before I added that. And so I'm definitely glad to see the addition. The AC has been on during a full sun and it was pretty awesome because the batteries stayed full while the AC was pulling a lot of power. Now, as soon as I turned on the dryer, sucked it back down. But uh, So right now it is very cloudy, very rainy, and I'm still seeing uh, between 60 and 80 watts coming in. Um, so not quite enough to keep things going. Uh, I just, like this one right now, it's got uh, 145 watts. Um, so it'll just slowly climb up and then the house pulls it back down again. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put in my 48 volt system instead of a 60. So right now I've got a single battery that's 60 volt and I have purchased these extra batteries over here to install. And so I'll have basically double the storage, but uh, reducing from 60 volt down to 48. And I think that will allow me to have a lot more power uh, used in the home on days that it's so sunny or the hydro's going well and just doesn't have anywhere to store it. Um, but anyway, I uh, just wanted to make this video to show you how I installed the solar panels and then just give you an update on how that power is doing. I still have four more panels, so I'll have a total of a three kilowatt system sitting out here. And the hydro, uh, right now I've got to do some work on the intake to get that better, but it makes about a kilowatt a day, so not tons. But uh, stay tuned to the videos. I'm going to be installing an off-grid inverter that will be over here. I'm going to run some lines up into the house so I can run the refrigerator and freezer and probably uh, internet and TV and just have some off-grid options for whenever the power is down, especially in the winter time. Anyway, subscribe if you haven't already, leave me a comment, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.